Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today, inshallah ta'ala, I'd like to talk about unconditional love. Why? Because I've found many a time that Christians, when they speak to Muslims specifically, they come at it from this particular perspective where they say, do you have unconditional love from God? Uh, or do you offer unconditional love? And this, you know, and they, and they often give the analogy of like, you know, for us, we're like the children of God and a father's love is unconditional. and and, and that and therefore, you know, we have something special and then do you have that? And the Muslim will say, well, no, I don't have unconditional love. And they'll say, ah, see, we have something that you don't have. So anyway, this, this angle comes about very often. So if you hear these terms and these concepts, uh, I want to maybe uh, cite for you some relevant verses that perhaps might be helpful in these type of discussions. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how actually the believers do have a special bond of faith. We believe this in Islam, but this is also mentioned in the Bible that the believers have a special love bond and that special love bond is actually conditional upon the faith so let's take a look it says in first john's 4 21 and he has given us this command anyone who loves god must also love their brother and sister so if you love god then you have to love your brothers and sisters in faith that that when somebody becomes a believer there's a special love for them it says in first john 3 16 uh, this is how we know what is love jesus christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters so you should be even loving them so much that you're willing to die for this particular group who the believers so you have this special love on this condition that they become part of the body of believers then you have in john uh, 13 34 and 35 it says a new a new command i give you love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So, so you guys are all the believers because I love you, right? You are all the believers in God. Therefore, you as believers must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So because of the special bond of faith that you have, the special bond of love that is conditional upon faith, then others will recognize your special relationship and uh, will be attracted to the faith, right? Ephesians uh, uh, 4, 15 to 16 says what? Uh, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, uh, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So in this verse, in these verses, you're getting this uh, image where, you know, the, 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 bel the believers are like one body, the head of, of it is Christ, and then all of the uh, uh, believers, they have their own, uh, you know, functions to operate in. And so they have this, 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 like a body, you know, some people are the workers, you guess you could call them the, the feet, some of them are the managers, maybe the hands, whatever, whatever, it's just an analogy. But the point is that they have a special bond and they grow in love with one another. What's the condition? That they're all believers. So this is describing what you could say is a conditional love. So this idea, well, we have unconditional love, hold up, there is a condition for this kind of love, it is that the, this person becomes a believer. So that's one example. And then there's also the condition of hating somebody. And what is that? So let's take a look at these verses. You're supposed to hate evil. And uh, my comment here is, uh, unconditional love makes love meaningless. And this is true. I mean, if, I, I really, you know, just think about it. If, if, for example, I look at this cup and I say, I love you. And I look at this person, I say, I love you. And I look at this chair and I say, I love you. And, you know, if everything is just love, 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 and everything is just, then that makes love meaningless, right? And I think that's a very important uh, thing to think about, that if you say God is love and just nothing else, right? He just has unconditional love for everything and everyone. Well, um, from this perspective, uh, his, his love is meaningless. He just looks at a table and says, I love you, and looks at this pen and says, I love you, etc. So um, we don't believe that God's love is uh, meaningless. Love rather is sincere when it's directed towards goodness, just as hatred should be directed towards evil. And how do we know this? Well, that is actually a, a biblical verse. You find it in Romans 12, 9. It says what? Love must be sincere. So how do you make love sincere? Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. That shows sincerity. When you have some sort of a differentiation, not when it's unconditional, but rather when it is specific to loving good and hating evil. That's in Romans. Uh, what else do you find? You find in Psalms 26, 5, it says, I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. So there's an example of hating, you know, when evildoers gather. And then uh, Psalms 31, 6, even more specific, I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. This is a very interesting verse because it doesn't say, I hate idolatry or I hate idol worship. It says what? I hate those who cling to worthless idols. So it's hating of the person specifically, not just the sin. Same thing you find in Proverbs 29, 27. The righteous detest the dishonest. The wicked detest the upright. So in this verse, you're finding what? That the righteous detest the dishonest. 
Um, this is a very interesting uh, verse because it's not saying that the righteous detest dishonesty or lies. Rather, they detest the dishonest as in people that are dishonest. Uh, same thing you find in Psalms 139, 21 to 22. Uh, do I not hate those who hate you, Lord? Uh, Lord? So he's making this prayer and asking, Do I not ha hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. So this is demonstrating his, uh, I believe it's David's good faith, that he's saying, Lord, I hate your enemies. Uh, I oppose them. I, I fight against them. That shows sincere love for God. Say, And this is perhaps the most straightforward. Luke 14, 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and child, brother and sister, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Now this verse, uh, I'm sure there's much commentary that we can make on it, but it seems that the most common interpretation here, uh, 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 based on my sort of quick uh, review of this of this verse, and I'm not, I'm not claiming to be a scholar in this, but it seems to be talking about how you have to have love of God first and foremost, primary. And then beneath that, if let's say, for example, you're your father or your mother or your wife, children, if any family member, uh, if they oppose that and try to pull you away from God, then you have to let them know that no, God comes first. And so if it gets to the point where I have to choose between loving God or loving you, then I'm going to love God and I'm going to hate you. So you have to be willing to do that. This doesn't mean that you literally have to hate every single, you know, every person has to hate their father or mother or family members, etc. Obviously they could, might be believers and they might be good people. That's fine. But what if they are pulling you away? What if it's like, you know, either it's going to be God or it's going to be family. Well, then I'm sorry. It's going to have to be, it's going to have to be God and not family. If I have to love him and hate you, then that's the way it's going to be. And so um, it's saying you have to be willing to do that. And so this idea of unconditional love, even for children, that's the big thing because you'll often hear a Christian saying, no, with the love that God has for us, is like the unconditional love that a father has for his child. Well, this verse is clearly saying that it's not unconditional. It's not unconditional. There's a condition, right? As long as it's in the love of God, then it's okay. But if it goes against the God's love, then you have to be willing to hate. It doesn't even just say not love. It says hate. It's a pretty strong word. Uh, let's keep going. So, uh, yes, this concept of unconditional love. Uh, Christians claim that they have the unconditional love of God because they're believers. So here's the question I have for them. What if you apostate and worship idols? Many Christians leave Christianity. Are they still going to heaven? So this is my question. Now, a common response to this is, the only Christians that abandon the faith are those who were never Christian to begin with. So then my response to that is, well, couldn't that be you? Maybe you're one of those Christians who think that you're a real Christian. You just thought that you're a real Christian, but you're going to find out maybe in a year from now, 10 years from now, that you're not really one and that you're actually going to abandon the faith. And you're going to say, hey, look at that. I guess I never was one this whole time. In the end, you don't have a guarantee unless... You disbelieve in free will, which we covered in the last video. We talked about uh, free will in the previous video. So if you want to take a look at that, you could say that. You could say uh, as a Christian that, no, I accepted uh, Jesus Christ and therefore he transformed my heart and therefore I don't have the ability to be evil or do evil or abandon the faith. So if you want to deny free will, that's fine. But then you're going to have to deal with the previous video that uh, addressed that. And furthermore, if you don't have free will, the word unconditional doesn't really apply to you. Why? Because unconditional implies that despite all of your options, you can't go wrong, right? Like if I tell somebody, like I have unconditional love, you can break the windows and you can, I don't know, smash the walls, you can do whatever you want, I still love you, right? So I'm saying despite all of the options that you have, and it's implying free will, right? You have so much free will and you can do anything, but despite all that, I'm, it's unconditional. I still love you no matter what. But being, being pre-programmed means you don't have options anyway. That means you're pre-programmed to be good and you're just going to be good. So this idea of unconditional doesn't really even apply or make sense. So um, I hope you see, um, I hope you get the point. Now, what is the Islamic position on this? Allah Ta'ala says, Allah Ta'ala says what? You will not find a people who believe in Allah in the last day having affection for those who oppose Allah and his messenger, even if they were their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their kindred. So yes, uh, you cannot be showing affection as a believer. You believe that yes, the bonds of family are obviously very high, very important. Loving family is very, very important. But there's always one above that, which is what? Loving God. And if a person is not just a disbeliever, but somebody opposing and somebody who is a avid opponent and trying to destroy uh, Islam, then Allah is saying what? That you will not find that if a person truly believes in Allah in the last day, they're not going to show affection. They're not going to be in love 
or loving the people who oppose Allah and his messenger, even if they're their family members, fathers, sons, brothers, kindred, doesn't make a difference. So uh, and from this perspective, it seems pretty clear that this idea of unconditional love, no, it's not from an Islamic perspective, but it's also not from a biblical perspective. I hope you see based on the verses previously mentioned. Uh, what is the Islamic position? Love isn't unconditional, therefore it is conditional, even for family members. And I'll give you a very simple example. If your child was Satan, right? What if you gave, you know, what if somebody's child is literally Satan? Would you therefore love Satan? And so hopefully, I'm, I would hope that even the Christian would say, well, no, I can't love Satan. So there, there you go. Your love is conditional. You can't say I have unconditional love uh, for my child and God's love is like an unconditional love for his children. No, uh, it doesn't work like that. Even if the family bond is strong, the bond of faith is stronger. In fact, Allah Ta'ala says what? Inna Indeed, the believers are nothing but a, bro a, brother and a, a brotherhood. And what does this imply? This implies that yes, there is the bond of blood, but even higher than that is the bond of brotherhood. And this is also implied in the story of Nuh السلام, of Noah, uh, peace be upon him, where uh, his son was killed by the flood, even though God had told him that your family will be protected and will be saved. And then he calls out and we have the ayat here and, and Noah called to his Lord and said, my Lord, indeed, my son is from my family. And indeed your promise is true and you are uh, the most just of judges. And so what was the response? Allah said, he, uh, he said, oh Noah, indeed, he is not of your family. Indeed, he is uh, one whose work was other than righteous. So don't ask me uh, for uh, that about which you have no knowledge. Indeed, I advise you, lest you be among the ignorant. So Allah Ta'ala is clarifying that there are two different types of family. Yes, the blood bond is important, but it's not as important as the bond of faith. And therefore, from that perspective, uh, I hope we all can understand that when Christians say things like we have unconditional love from God, that's not really true. When they say we should love unconditionally, that's not really that's not really accurate either. And when they say it's like the love of a, that a child that a father should have for their children or a parent should have for their children because that should be unconditional, that's not true either. So I hope that's uh, clear. Uh, so uh, just some concluding remarks. God sends some people to heaven and others to hell. That's proof of conditional love. The fact that he, some people can go to hell and others can go to heaven shows that there is such thing as conditional love. The fact that the believers have a special love bond uh, between each other. Uh, and disbelievers don't share in that special love, therefore that shows what? That's more proof that love is conditional. Uh, even devout Christians sometimes abandon their faith. Uh, they're, they're, that means there is no guarantee. Turning to disbelief means they've violated the conditions of God's love, therefore it was never unconditional. And uh, finally, we do believe that Allah Ta'ala does give a promise to the believers, but the question is, are we believers? So that's what we always have to work towards. You know, my name, your name wasn't mentioned specifically, neither in the Bible, neither, neither in the Quran, but the descriptions. And the descriptions are of the believers. And Allah does give his promise that he, that he will give his unconditional love to the believers. I mean, I guess, I guess you could say the condition is that you're a real believer. As Allah says, what? Uh, indeed, those who have believed and done righteousness, righteous deeds, their Lord will guide them because of their faith. Beneath them, rivers will flow in the gardens of pleasure. So may Allah Ta'ala make us of the believers. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who can uh, constantly be true to our faith and live according to that faith and so that we can get this promise of paradise for those who it has been promised to. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Zagul Khayyab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.